Hi, this is Priyanka Chopra, and you are watching Channel Y. The biggest South Asian media group, Y Media. Y Media. Y media group established in 2001 is a media company with a 360 degree approach in reaching our audience over five platforms television radio newspaper online news portal and mobile app why media has newspaper midweek radio South Asian Pop. Hi, I'm Amitabh Bachchan and you're listening to South Asian Pop. Hi, this is Amir Khan and you're listening to South Asian Pop. Ab har din sune GTA ka number one radio station FM 91.9. All English 24-7 television network and Y Media Plus. Watching Channel Y. Channel Y. Prime Minister, welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be back. Online SouthAsianDaily.com, the biggest South Asian media group. Why media? Hello everyone, my name is Yudhir Jaswal. I'm the group editor at Why Media, and today we have a very special guest here at Why Media, Brad Redikop. He's the Associate Shadow Minister for Immigration, Refugees, and Citizenship. Brad, a very warm welcome on Why Media. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me, Yudhir. It's great to be here. You are very welcome. Recently, we were interviewing our immigration minister, uh, Sean Fraser, and uh, he did explain about the immigration targets. Uh, last year in 2021, it was around uh, 400,000 plus. Now from 400,000 plus in 2023, 24, 460, 80, and then half a million in 2025. What's your take on this one? Well, there's no question that uh, Canada needs immigrants to fill the jobs that we have. The simple truth is that we have a large group of, of baby boomers who are moving, who are getting older and starting to retire, and Canadians just aren't having enough babies. So we need we need to fill the population gaps, uh, especially the jobs that we need. And so, so there's no question that that's an important need. Now, conservatives look at this a little bit differently. Uh, we don't believe that the government centrally planning, uh, you know, bureaucrats or politicians should be deciding a specific number. Our view is is rather that we believe that it should be a demand driven system so if employers need employees uh, that's the that should determine the numbers and so the more people that we need the, the higher the number should be if we don't have demand for workers and, and needs that way we shouldn't have as many people and simply because we don't want to have we don't want to bring people to Canada and then have them not working in the fields in which they're trained to do yeah, uh, you're right. Those are very good points that you just made. But then almost a million jobs are vacant right now. The birth rate is 1.4. We're an aging country. So this certainly demands all these numbers. But I like your idea that you, you don't want to have a fixed a fixed number. But don't you think all these numbers do indicate we need that? Absolutely. Uh, th yeah. The number probably isn't far out of line. And I think what, what's very important, though, is that we allow employers to bring in the people that they can employ so that we, we have the right people coming in when it comes to the economic class of, of, uh, of newcomers to the country. So, you know, a, a company advertises for, uh, for workers. They can't find the workers that they need. What we need is a very simple and efficient way for them to go uh, to another country, bring somebody in on a temporary work permit, uh, give them the job in the field that they're trained in, and then give them a very quick path to citizenship. And that's, that is a very efficient and effective use of, of a newcomer. Then we get you know, a hard-working, well-trained, law-abiding citizen that, that is employed you know, at the level that they need to in the job that they're trained for. Yeah, you used a very interesting term here, law abiding. I really like like that thing, you know. One of the challenges that I think so, this is, I've been talking to almost every immigration uh, minister or uh, the shadow ministers as well. You know, what about integration? You're mm -hmm. also the shadow minister of immigration, citizenship and refugees. Mm -hmm. What about integration? How well are we integrating these newcomers to Canada? Mm -hmm. Well, it's important and it's it's very important that we, we uh, give newcomers a community to live in. Uh, that we allow the existing people of the community to integrate well with them. And it's something that I've been doing a lot in my riding is uh, back in Saskatoon is, is helping to, you know, first of all, get to know newcomers in the city. Oftentimes, 
uh, you know, we, we have newcomers over here and, and people that have been around for a while in a different place. We need to get together. We need to understand each other, understand our stories. Uh, many, many of us, whether we were born in Canada or born outside of Canada, have very interesting stories. And so as we are able to talk together and, and uh, do life together, we get to know each other. That helps break down racial barriers. It helps break down uh, mistrust and, and all of those kind of negative things. They all, they all are, are uh, they don't necessarily completely go away, but they're certainly helped. If, if you and I know each other, uh, we're much li less likely to have you know, disputes and, and I understand you much better. And so that's what we need to do more of is, is spend time together. Very good point that you just made, you know, but uh, in, in the name of spending time together or getting to know each other, which is great, but then we have multiculturalism, which is great. There's a lot of funding for multicultural events, but most of the events that we see, I mean, multiculturalism within that particular community. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I see an Italian event, it's mostly Italian. Yeah. If I see uh, a Sikh heritage being celebrated, it's mostly from the Sikh community. We already know each other. We already know e our culture. Uh, where is the integration in the name of multiculturalism is great, but then are we really integrating them that we're all Canadians now and working for the common denominators? It, it's a great question, and it takes work. You know, and I'll use the example in Saskatoon of cricket. Okay. Uh, everybody loves sports, and, and cricket in Saskatoon is a fairly new thing. Um, I saw cr my first cricket game many years ago, but, but uh, it's new to a lot of people. And so what's happening is there's a growing cricket uh, group culture in Saskatoon. And what we need to do, and this is the hard part, is we need to integrate existing Saskatoon residents into the cricket culture and help. And so one of the things that we're talking about doing is having a charity game where we have, uh, you know, local uh, politicians, police chief, fire chief, etc., and the media out so that we can uh, have a cricket match against some of the, uh, the much more talented <laughs> South Asian people in our city. But that's one idea that we're working on in Saskatoon. And so I think it takes effort, it takes work, but it's, it's things that we as leaders in our communities can do. Great. And uh, if I may ask you about the fall economic report that was just uh, presented, you know, and uh, we're seeing challenges at a global level here. So what's your take? I mean, is the government doing enough as far as economy, job creation is concerned? Well, the government is certainly good at spending money. That, that we know for sure. Um, we have a very high inflation rate in our country. And while it's true that inflation is affecting many countries around the world, our inflation uh, is worse than it needs to be. And that's been confirmed by uh, Mark Carney, for example, has said that, that our inflation problem in Canada is a made in Canada problem. And so the, the spending that this government has, over, has undertaken over the last number of years is, is, has a, a great deal of reason in terms of why the inflation rate is where it is. And so what, what we need to do is we need to get a conservative government in place that starts to reduce some of that excess spending that we've had in our system. We spend 30% more per year in our government right now than we did in 2019. This is not including any COVID spending. This is just, this is just government expenditures today versus 2019. That's a phenomenal amount of money that we, we shouldn't be spending. There's ways that we can reduce that. So in Canada, we've got a spending problem and that's something we have to fix. Right. You just uh, mentioned uh, we need to have a conservative government. Uh, you've been, you know, last time I knew you won a majority was more than 10 years ago in 2011, but uh, 2015, 19, losing elections. Any, any reason your idea is almost alien to the Canadians, it's not resonating? What's that reason? You know, I think, I think what matters right now is what's happening in the world right now. And I think what matters to Canadians, regardless of where you were born, is paying the bills, putting food on the table, allowing your kids to be in you know, cricket or soccer or hockey or whatever sports you want to put them in. That's what matters to Canadians right now. And so you know, I can't speculate as to why the, you know, things happened in the past, but what we know for sure is that we have an issue right now with the cost of living in our country. The current government is not helping that. In fact, many of the policies they're doing are hurting that. And so we, we need a different government. We need a different direction so that we can fix the problems at the government level so that it comes down to making life more affordable for Canadian families. Uh, it's great that you're here in GTA and it's nice talking to you. I still remember 2011 when uh, the Conservatives won a majority. One of the reasons uh, many said this was Jason Kenney. He created inroads in this GTA ridings. I mean, if uh, the Conservatives are almost shut out of the 25 Toronto ridings, then if you, uh, the suburbs close to another 50 ridings, you know, and then uh, it's very difficult for you to form a minority government, let alone a majority. So we still don't see that sort of activity here in GTA from the conservative side. 
Well, I think, I think we are working hard at connecting with all Canadians wherever they live. You're absolutely correct. There's a, a very large concentration of, of ridings here in the GTA. And so obviously it's an area that we need to focus on. But I think what's important is, is uh, getting out, reaching out to different, different Canadians of, of all kinds of backgrounds and understanding their issues and what matters to them and, and the concerns that they have. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here. Uh, talking to people as well today because I, I want to know that I want to understand what is important to people here in the GTA and that helps us to formulate policies and ideas that that can solve these problems what do you want to share I'm um, uh, you're traveling a lot you're talking to uh, a lot of people here in GTA what are the top two concerns well the top concern far and away is the cost of living no question okay. the cost of putting food on the table the cost of, of uh, keeping the family together uh, and that's, we, we hear that all the time. And I, I think the second, the second thing that I hear most is related to that, and that is it's because of Justin Trudeau and his policies. And so what I'm sensing is that there's frustration with the average family in terms of pocketbook issues about paying the bills. And there is beginning to be a, a very clear line drawn between that issue and the current government. And so uh, there's, there's a lot of talk going on out there about, about do the Liberals deserve another uh, another term at, in government? And, and a lot of what I'm hearing is no, the answer is no. The answer is no. Okay, my last and final question would be, um, I remember I was at uh, CBC Studios the next day of the election, they asked me why did the Liberals, I said no, the Liberals didn't win this election, it was the Conservatives, they lost this election. So now my question to you would be, what are your solutions? What are you going to do anything different in the coming election so that yes our viewers are watching they know yes this is a conservative plan mm -hmm. well first and foremost we have a very strong leader in Pierre Polio uh, Pierre has a very concise and simple message on the cost of living and that's a real focus of his and something that is that a conservative government would be laser focused on uh, improving the cost of living for people so policies that we would do would would be totally in support of making life more affordable when it comes to uh, the immigration side of that equation, uh, we're fully in support of immigration. In fact, our big uh, desire is to make it quicker and easier for newcomers to integrate into the jobs that they're qualified for. So if you're uh, an engineer coming from another country, we want you to work as an engineer here. There's no, it's no, not helpful to anybody if you're driving a taxi. And so we want to implement policies so that you, within 60 days, will know that you can work in the field that you're trained in and uh, work with the prov provincial governments because immigration is a shared responsibility so that uh, we can actually start, you could start your credentialing process back home even before you come to Canada. And then also if you need some time off to do your credentials and get some studying to put some loans in place so that you could do that. So that's one of the main focuses that we want to do to make sure that newcomers coming to our country are actually employed in the fields in which they're trained. Yeah, I did interview your leader, uh, Peter Paul, a couple of times, but I'm still trying to assess him. Mean, seems to be very brilliant, very sharp. Uh, but then, um, you know, the issue with the cryptocurrency, his, his statements on that one, and then the Bank of Canada statement, and, um, you know, supporting uh, the convoy in Ottawa. These three things, they do beg a question. I mean, what is, what is your take on this one? We are focused on the main issue today, which is cost of living and the ability for families to put food on the table and the abilities for families to put their kids into activities and uh, put fuel in their cars. The cost of home heating this winter is in some cases doubling in this country. And so, you know, the impact of the carbon tax on all of these things, those are the issues that today are, are uh, hurting Canadians. And those are the issues that Pierre is focused on. All right, Brad, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure talking to you. Anything else you want to uh, say, to your, say to our audience? Well, it's, it's just, um, it's great to, to talk to you in the studio here and to all the people that, uh, the millions literally of people that live in Canada and in the GTA area. And so I hope to be back again and uh, I hope you'll have me back. Sure, we look forward. Thank you so much for your time. You okay. wish you all the best. Thanks so much. Welcome. So that's all the time that we have at Y Media. Hope uh, you enjoyed the discussion today. Stay tuned with Channel Y, Y Plus, Radio Y, and Midweek News Group. Thanks for watching. Hi, this is Priyanka Chopra, and you are watching Channel Y. The biggest South Asian media group, Y Media. Y Media. Y Y Media Group, established in 2001, is a media company with a 360 degree approach in reaching our audience over five platforms television, radio, newspaper, online news portal, and mobile app.
वाई मीडिया हैज न्यूज पेपर मिडवी रेडियो साउथ एशियन पॉलिसमिताबर खान एंड यूर लिस्निंग टू साउथ एशियन पॉल अब हर दिन सुने जी टी ए का नंबर वन रेडियो स्टेशन एफ एम नाइनटी वन पॉइंट नाइन ऑल इंग्लिश ट्वेंटी फोर सेवन टेलीविजन नेटवर्क एंड वाई मीडिया प्लस watching channel y channel y prime minister welcome it's a pleasure to be here it's a pleasure to be back Online South Asian Daily dot com, the biggest South Asian media group. Why media? Why?